And everyone wants to let themselves go a little during the holiday season, and most Americans do end up gaining weight during the five-week period between Thanksgiving and New Year's Eve. Over half will gain two pounds, 10% gain five pounds or more. Now, that wouldn't be so bad, except most people don't manage to lose the weight they gain. So our friend Dr. Mehmet Oz of the Dr. Oz Show is here with some tricks to help you keep off those extra pounds in the first place. And we were just talking before we came on here. The thing that happens is you gain that weight during the holidays, you don't take it off, and that's most of the weight gain for most people during their lifetime. It's remarkable. You're not putting weight on in June when it's beach time. Everyone knows they got to take care of themselves then, but the weight gain you get over the holidays, and there's plenty of reasons for it, which we're going to talk about some strategies to cope with, but that weight stays with you the whole year long. And you struggle in January and February to lose the weight, but by the time March comes along, you now have settled into a new plateau, which is, let's say, four pounds heavier than you used to be. And you every year, four base. more. That's right. Okay, so let's figure out how to stop it in the first place. Uh, what's your first tip? Well, you know, you, you've got temptations everywhere. You know, you, you're out there in hot-blooded pursuit of a brownie, and you fall prey to the reality that you can't hold yourself back. So you got to write it down. And here's why it's so important, George. You need to slap down periodically to remind yourself exactly what you're doing to your body. Plus, every time you think about eating that food, that little brownie, a little chocolate chip, you got to remind yourself that you have to write it down. And by the way, while you're writing stuff down, write down your weight. A couple times a week, at least. And, and you're not talking just the meals. You mean every time if you're sitting there baking and you take a little piece of something, you count everything. And that's why you fall down over the holidays. That diet you're on comes screaming off the rails because you're not aware of exactly how many calories are in every little bite. And just the hassle of writing down the fact that you had that one little morsel of food, that tiny little wafer, will pull you back a little bit. And the weight gain occurs so quickly you can actually measure it. So weighing yourself a couple times a week actually provides you a little bit of a reminder with a, with a pretty sharp jab that you've got to get back on track again. And make that U-turn. But that is so hard to do at the big parties. You know, they're passing around appetizers. You've got the big buffet. You've got desserts. <laughs> you've got main courses. And, and, and that's where pe most people end up losing it. Yeah, they go park themselves at the buffet table and eat themselves to oblivion. Listen, you need a pre-party snack. Please, this is, if you take nothing away from this segment, remember this. I don't want you ever walking into a, uh, to a, a holiday party without you know, a cheese stick. I showed a couple here. These are 50 to 100 calories. Uh, a handful of nuts, an apple, 70% uh, you know, cocoa chocolate. It doesn't have to be necessarily purely healthy, but something that's a little bit more nutrient-rich for you because your brain is not looking for calories. It's measuring nutrients. If you've got 100 calories in your body before you walk into the party, you're not going to be rav you know, ravaging through the food looking for stuff because you're so hungry. And, and, and it works especially well if it's protein or not necessarily. Uh, well, actually, any nutrient will do it for you. Complex carbohydrates, fine protein happens to be particularly effective. Fats will get you there, too. That's why nuts work. But again, it's 100 calories. It takes the edge off so your reptilian brain doesn't dominate the party. You also have some counterintuitive device, homemade. For, for desserts isn't always better. This blew me away. I never thought about it, but it's so true. What happens when you, when you bake products? You eat half of it, right? You, make, you take a little cut out of the food, and you say, you know what? I didn't cut that straight. I'm going to cut a little more off for myself. And so you've eaten through the half the pie. So go to a baked goods store, buy the product. I'll give an example here. It's simple. It's inexpensive. And you know what? You're not going to cut into the pie you bought at the, at the, at the party, for, you know, for the party. Uh, you take it over there. It's wrapped. It's perfect. It's good for you. And you're not going to, you know, again, not, you know, take a little itty bits and put in your mouth while you're making the product itself. People also tend to drink a little more during those holiday parties. And that can really add it up. We have a glass of eggnog over here. Two glasses of eggnog. That's a meal. It is a meal. It's 450 calories per glass of eggnog. Some of those fancy holiday drinks, they're 1,000 calories by themselves. So here's my secret little recipe for you. A little bit of club soda. Carry it around with you. What you want to do is mix it with your wine, make a wine spritzer. In fact, any hard alcohol you have with a little bit of ice is less than 100 calories a drink. All your drinks ought to be in that range of the 100 calories per serving. And remember this, always alternate a hard drink or any drink you have of alcohol with water. Club soda works well as well. Why? Prevents you from getting a little intoxicated, cuts down the calorie intake you have at the same time, and you don't get disinhibited. You don't make foolish decisions. <laughs> That's a good, very good point as well. But everybody's going to overindulge at some point there are ways to make up for it of course and instead of penalizing and torturing yourself just do the smart thing get 20 minutes more activity know you're gonna have to plan to be ahead of it and don't give up you can make it work okay and you're gonna have a lot more on your show later today about all this well i'm actually taking santa claus into the truth <laughs> tube here we are i'm gonna measure his even santa who does so much good for us should not be putting out extra belly fat so i wrestled him into the studio uh, and listen we've got a big plan we're gonna be talking about all the great things including by the way the 12 steps of christmas the first one being go caroling takes care of anxiety okay Dr. Oz, thanks very much.